Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. Today is Tuesday, the 19th of February, 2019, and this is episode 31. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. So how are you guys? It's been a little more than a week since my last recording, but the kids had um, midwinter break. Uh, I am going to apologize one time for all of the vehicles that are going to drive by. It's just after 8 o'clock in the morning, which means people are um, going to work and school and whatever. I just got in the house from dropping off my kids at school. Um, so I live on a corner lot, and you'll be able to hear the cars driving by. <laughs> so the kids were off of school which is why I'm recording so late. I could have kicked them out of the living room to try to record, but that's just such a hassle because this is the common area where everybody hangs out. And yeah, that's a hassle. So I didn't do that. So you're getting it a little bit later, but that's fine, right? You don't mind. Um, the lighting, because it's eight o'clock in the morning, the sun is still rising over the it's currently behind the corner of my across the street neighbor's house. So it's probably going to come full blast for a little while. <laughs> and then it will be decent lighting. Um, I almost want to wait to record. However, I have a long to-do list. And I know that I'll just get caught up in my to-do list and push off recording. So you're going to have to take the not ideal lighting. But it's fine, right? It's fine. Um... There's no group news right now, no knit alongs or anything. So let's talk about finished objects, none of which I have to show you <laughs> because they are all in use right now. Uh, I made my daughter a pair of earmuffs that she has been wearing. It's a disc stuffed together over the ear part. And then I had a metal headband that I desperately want to wear, but I can't wear formed headbands because they just don't fit me right and they give me headaches. I crocheted the, the discs and then crocheted onto the headband. And it worked out really nicely because the headband has cat ears on it, which means I am able to, or I was able to kind of fasten that chain stitch around the ears so it wouldn't slip all over the place um, because otherwise I feel like if it was just a plain metal headband with no stoppers or anything it would just slide right out and she has been wearing them a ton. I also finished the effervescent socks which is a pattern by Paper Daisy Creations. It's in the um, Socks of Wonka collection which I will probably be making more of those. The yarn is Cascade Heritage in a numbered colorway, and they are already being worn. Um, I made them for my boyfriend, and I was going to hold them for, oh, here comes the sun. Really, really bright. This is a really attractive look for me. Uh, I was going to hold them for his birthday, which is in April, but then I finished them on Valentine's Day morning and I, and they were like Valentine's E colors. They had red and pink and kind of Valentine-y, so he's worn them like five times in the past five days. <laughs> I don't know if he's taken them off. They probably need to be washed. What else did I finish? I didn't actually bring my show notes upstairs because I was like, oh, let me just get started. I also did some samples for Joanne, and now I'm finished with those. So all of the samples are turned in and finished. The tritine that I started um, re-knitting, <laughs> that I knit a whole hat, blocked it to see if it would stretch. It didn't stretch enough. Ripped it back to the very, to the brim used the brim as a folded brim and then started knitting and it didn't work I made it work <laughs> so I think last week I had the brim done I had ripped it back to the brim and done the first round where I increased several stitches I don't know how many I also 
changed the cable pattern. So it's a four by four pattern. And it is a paid for pattern, but it's my paid for pattern. So if I give you the secret sauce, whatever. Um, <laughs> I am very much into what's going on on the camera. It's very fun for me. It's a four over four cable. And instead of working the cable as written, I purled the two outer stitches. So then I had six stitches in the middle and I did a three over three, but before I, or after I did the first three stitches, I did a yarn over and then I did the second set of three stitches. And then when I came around on the next round, I just dropped that yarn over. So I gave it a little more room since the mohair yarn wasn't very stretchy, but that's finished and it has been delivered to my aunt who commissioned it. I realized when I went to edit that I forgot a couple things that I finished. Um, sorry, this is wobbly. So my son has taken up ice skating. He has finished the first beginner level sessions of classes and, um, and he wants to sign up for the second. So we got him his own pair of ice skates so we could stop renting them. And I made him a little set to go with his skates yesterday. I made him some blade guards and some, I guess, kind of boot toppers because his um, his skates were rubbing his legs where his socks weren't tall enough. So I made those and then I made him a pair of fingerless mitts because he keeps losing his. <laughs> And then when we get to the ice rink, he's like, oh, but it's so cold. Can I borrow yours? So I just made him some acrylic ones that if he loses them, not a big deal. But when we're not at the skating rink, he can just store the boot toppers and the mitts inside his ice skates. Okay, so I partially closed the curtain because even though I was enjoying the effect of the sun on my face, it doesn't make for showing it very well for yarn because I do have works in progress to show you. I have four. It's very exciting. So the one that I've been working on while I've been talking to you is the Sockhead Slouch Hat by Kelly McClure. And the yarn that I'm using is White Birch Fiber Arts in Does This Rainbow Make My Black Look Big? Yeah, see, totally washed out those colors. I love this yarn so, so much. My plan for this was to use it just for um, lunch knitting, but I haven't actually worked very many days this month between snow days and I taught a class at Joann's and I'll be teaching a class this Friday at Joann's and what else? Oh, we had a scheduled midwinter break. So I brought it home because I knew that you know, we were going to have breaks and um, there were conferences and I was at the Joanne Open House this weekend. And just a lot of stuff where I could be knitting, but none of my other works in progress are the sorts of things that you can just kind of casually carry around. So I know that I knit this all of the, from from where the ribbing stops down at Joanne. I think that I knit these two colors in, or these two stripes at Joanne also, because I wanted to make sure it was long enough. I'm pretty sure. So I knit all of that in three hours of just sitting and talking to customers and stuff. Um, and now I'm working on it with you right here so that I can be working on something while we're having a chat. I think I used the stitch count in the pattern. That seems likely. I didn't actually read the pattern, but I've heard people say how many inches they've done on the sock head hat for the ribbing, so I just kind of went with that and also what looked aesthetically pleasing in stripes for me. Um, which turned out to be seven stripes. And let's try it on. Let's see. Let's see how it's going. Oh yeah, that's cute. It's not for me, 
the did I tell you that the yarn was a gift from Josh for me because I love this colorway so much but I didn't buy it for myself because um I could make myself some stripy socks however I don't I do I wear my hand knit socks a lot but I don't wear a lot of pairs of hand knit socks because all of my socks are wool um all of my hand knit socks are wool and if you just wear them in rotation and let them like air out for a few days they don't smell and they don't get gross so I really only wash my hand knit socks like my four pairs of hand knit socks that I have in rotation right now like once a month so I just don't need a lot of hand knit socks um I like hand knit socks, but I have hand knit socks in my drawer that I haven't even worn yet because they're not part of the rotation. And yes, I could switch them out. I just don't because the ones that are on rotation, um, I hang up on a rack, like not a rack, it's a chair. I have a chair that has a ladder back. So I hang up the socks there. It's my spinning wheel chair. So it's not like other people have to have my sort of dirty socks on them, but my socks don't really get dirty. So yeah, I could have knit hand knit socks, but um, I just, I know that I would put it off for forever because I don't need more socks. I like having socks, but I don't need more socks. I've heard a lot of um, podcasters mentioned this recently. I don't really wash my hand knits that often. Um, I know that, oh, Soprano Knits, what's her name? She's so cute and I can't remember her name. She just had a whole discussion about um, not washing hand knits very frequently because they don't need it, right? Like sheep go and play in the fields and whatever. I couldn't remember what fields were. I thought forests because it starts with the same letter and that was not correct. And I saw like hillsides and stuff, but I couldn't remember what they were called. So fields and they don't need washing all the time. And you're just putting sheep fur on your feet or head or body. So yeah, I just don't wash my hand. It's very often. I wash them if they smell or if something gets spilled on them, which doesn't happen very often. So, tangent. This hat is not for me, <laughs> is where this is all going. Um, while I love it, I know me and I wouldn't actually wear a rainbow colored accessory. Even though I love rainbows, I want to be the type of person who would wear rainbow accessories. <laughs> I might someday. But I'm really not that person. I'm much more into things like this that are muted. And this is the divine hat. I've talked about it a lot. I wear it a lot. Um, I have a green hat that I wear a lot. I have a blue hat that I wear a lot. Like a, but like not blue, like um, a gray blue, muted blue. The green is a darker kind of in the like family of emerald green but not bright um i have a brown and green string band that i wear a lot those are the colors that i wear this is not a color that i wear so i am making this for my best friend because she picked it out of my stash when she was here she wants hats so i can't remember if i'm making her one or two definitely this one maybe two who knows? I'll have to look and see what I have pulled out in my um, laundry basket of projects that I plan to finish this year. That's a thing that I did, by the way, at the beginning of the year. I have a whole list of the projects that I want to make this year. Things that I already knew I was going to make. So I bought, or I didn't buy, I did a sample for Wolfiend and um, I did two samples and in exchange I got yarn for a sweater, a small sweater. 
Um, so I knew I wanted to make that. I know that I'm making Christmas socks. I know that I'm making certain things or certain things that have been on my to-do list for a long time. So I made a list. I pulled all of the yarn that I had for the projects. I think I have yarn for everything pulled and it's all sitting in a laundry basket so I can remember when something new and shiny comes along. Hey, does it fit in this category? Can you make it fit in this category? So tangent. I don't know what size needles the pattern calls for. I know what size needles work for me knitting hats. So I knit the ribbing on a US size one, which is 2.25 millimeter needles. And I'm knitting the body on a 2.75 millimeter needle, which is a US two. Good fabric. I'm enjoying the, um, the way it's turning out. I'm not particularly loving the knit. I don't love stockinette in the round forever. I know a lot of people do. I don't love garter stitch. I know a lot of people do. It's not my jam. I want to be engaged in what I'm working on. However, I am enjoying this as a placeholder for tube socks for the kids for Christmas, basically. It's filling that void right now. The I don't have to think about it. I don't have to look at it. I've been knitting this whole time and I've looked very few times at my knitting um, sort of project. It's perfect for that. Let's talk about something else though, because we've been talking about this hat for forever, right? So this in my Mama C's creations bag is the design shawl that I'm working on that I'm not going to show you because I will show you the tag for the bag though. Um, it, she sent this to me as a gift forever ago and I love it. I love dragonflies. Do you guys know that? They're like my favorite insecty thing. Um, I do really, really like pretty bugs. I do. Butterflies are awesome, um, but dragonflies are my jam. I get so excited when I see one. I point it out to everybody. I'm like, look, <sighs> they're exciting. Whereas butterflies, I'm like, oh, there's a butterfly. And then other people are like, oh my gosh, there's a butterfly. Look. <sighs> I also really do enjoy bumblebees. I know bumblebees are a big one for a lot of people. You either love them or you hate them. And I fall on the side of loving, but I don't need them as a motif. Whereas dragonflies, yes. Okay, so I will kind of just like show you kind of a little bit. I think that I would like to do this pattern as a knit along upon release. Maybe a mystery knit along. I haven't done one of those before, but I think that I would like to do um, I have heard, I don't know this for my own, I didn't go and do the research, but Haley told me that when Corey I Rock Knits did her, I think she said it was Corey, um, did her advent knit along this year, she had one thread for people who wanted it to be a mystery and didn't want to know, and then another thread for people who wanted to know what they were knitting before they knit it. And I think that I might take that idea and run with it but still release clues for the finished shawl like a mystery knit along. It's super potato chippy, so I am thinking that in the month of May, when everything's in transi transition, so it's not too hot to be working on a shawl, but it's not too cold, and hopefully for um, Australian and New Zealand watchers and, you know, anybody where it's flipped seasons for mine it won't be it'll be cooling down a little and it won't be too hot to knit a shawl I'm thinking and plus it's my birthday month let's do something fun for my birthday month I'm thinking I'm gonna do it then I feel like the shawl is half finished it's not really it's it's kind of a big scarf like a wide scarf um I think you could definitely block it to be a wrap and I'm pretty sure we're going to do a knit along during my birthday. And you can choose if it's a mystery or not. 
which will kind of fit in with the um, how the design is made and stuff. Um, I'll explain more of that as we get closer, I guess. But that's what I'm thinking. Let me know if you would be interested in doing a sort of mystery knit along sort of thing. I really, really like the idea. It's super potato chippy. It would be so easy to make a mystery knit along. And the way I would do it, it wouldn't be like weekly releases. I'm trying to decide if I want to do a new section release every weekday and then let people catch up on weekends. They're really, really small though. Um, a section release would be, let me do some math here. Hold on. I'm going to say some numbers. So if you're counting, get to a resting place while I do some mental math. So I think the, the longest a section repeat would be, would be 33 rows. I might be making that up. I could be a liar. My mental math could be off, but I'm pretty sure it would be 33 rows and it is less than 100 stitches wide. So not very many stitches and then you would have the whole weekend to catch up. I would either do it that way or I would release um, a pattern every other day, a, a pattern file every other day. That's what I'm thinking. Let me know what you think about those two options. And um, it is knit using a full skein of yarn and then it's going to use a 50 gram skein, like a, a full 100 skein, a 50 gram skein, and then six 20 gram skeins. It should be pretty awesome. And really quick, I'll just throw up a picture of um, the yarn that I'm using so that you can see it. It's Cattails yarn. It is amazing that the Black Aja colorway, which is the 100 gram skein, is everything. Every time I pull it out of my bag and anyone sees it, they're like, oh, that's beautiful. I will definitely be ordering a skein or two for myself for that. Um, the yarn was, full disclosure, the yarn for the design Kat sent me. I didn't pay for it, but I will be buying a skein of Black Aja because it's so beautiful <sighs> and I need it to be something. Even if it's not for me, I need to work with it again. It's just, it's beautiful. Totally forgot but to mention it, but the, um, the sock head hat is in this Fates thread Sailor Moon bag. And I love it. Here's the, let's see if I can get the tag. Oh yeah, you can see that. She has an Etsy shop. She does a lot of sales. If you follow her on Instagram, this bag is so well made. I love it. I take it everywhere. It's a, I have several project bags, but I have three that get a ton of use and then the rest of them get in rotation as, um, as they're appropriate, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, the right size, like this bag, I don't knit a lot of projects that need something quite this big. So I usually carry blanket projects in it and it just sits at the foot of my bed, but the shawl was getting um, too big for the bag that I had it in last week. My next work in progress is in a Silver Shed USA ZK 2017 bag. And it is the In and Out Socks by Cookie A. This is the second sock. And um, I just have just the cuff finished. I do not have the first sock finished. I have the first sock through do, 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 do. It's stuck under my yarn, which is Knit Picks Hawthorne Tonal in the Hood something. I'm pretty sure it's Hood something and not something Hood colorway. I don't remember for sure though. Um, but I have the first sock through, this is where it was last week, have it through the leg. I'm ready to start the heel. But I am going to work the heels and the feet of these socks two at a time magic loop. And the reason I'm going to do that is because it's a heel flap and gusset 
and I would like to make sure that they're the same on both socks. Sometimes I do them separate, like the effervescent sock, I did the heel flap and gusset totally separate. Um, but for this, I'm going to do them together. And I also want to go down a needle size when I get to the foot. It's a thing that I've just recently started doing on socks where I knit the leg on US size ones and then knit the feet on US zeros to hopefully give the sock a little more longevity um, and give it a little bit of a better fit because I find that the socks that I've knit for myself on US size ones, the feet, like, they're just a little bit too big, just a little. So I'm, I'm testing out this thing and seeing if it works. Um, or instead of US size zero, I use US one bamboo. However, for these socks, these are in and out by Cookie A. Pretty sure I said it, but can't hurt to say it again. Because I would rather have a podcaster say it a couple times rather than one time because sometimes I forget what they're talking about. I'm like, oh, that's really pretty. Or they'll say it, but I'm doing something and they don't necessarily have show notes, even though I'm trying really hard to be good at show notes. I'm very tangential this morning. So this is a pretty heavily patterned sock. And these are not actual cables. There's no cabling involved. It's, um, it's all increases and decreases. It's really, really beautiful. It's really ingenious. I have loved all of the Cookie A designs that I've knit, um, including this one. I just think they're so cool and they turn out amazing. And there is, there's some yarn over details. Um, if you wanted to make it less lacy, you could always knit those through the back loop. Um, I don't mind them though. So yes, this is the first leg and it's just, it's beautiful. The details are beautiful. And if you're looking for a cookie A pattern that is not all knit in uh, twisted stitches, this one's not. It's just knits and pearls and no twisted stitches yet that I'm aware of. There might be some on the foot, but I don't think so. Anyway, the reason why I'm going to do these two at a time, the main reason, is because the legs are charted separately. They're on different pages, but the feet are charted together. So it'll be on one page. I can just work straight across both charts and get it done that way. I think that that just makes more sense to me to work it. You, your opinions may vary and they are valid and that's fine. But that's how I plan on working it. So this week I am hoping to get pretty, I, I'm hoping to get through the, um, through the leg because I feel like once I get to the foot, it's going to zoom and next week it's March. So I have to work hard on that if I plan to get it, if I'm actually going to get it done by the end of this month, which I would like to do. They are for my boyfriend's mom and they are her Christmas present for, you know, Christmas that was two months ago. But she knows that they get there when they get there because again, it's another case where he was like, oh, and she wears a size this shoe and it was the middle of December and I was like okay as long as she doesn't mind getting them you know in springtime because yeah that's when it's gonna happen and also this the the chart is brilliant it is not something memorizable for me it's it's just not it's like too many rows I think it's like it's almost a 30 row repeat yeah, it's beautiful though. And I really, really enjoy working on it when I actually sit down and working it. And I know I can do a lot because I've done, you know, a whole repeat in a sitting. It's just finding the time to do that much work and pay attention, which wasn't the thing that was happening last week. Now my last work in progress, something I started this morning. I was at an award ceremony for my kids last week and they both got awards and I'm so proud of them. They're doing great. And conferences happened and they're doing great. My son is still struggling in reading. I think he's just always, I am going to have to come to terms with the fact that my son is not going to be a straight A student 
in reading, but he is trying and he is doing his best. And I'm very good about being supportive and just saying, as long as you try, blah, 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 when I'm talking to him, but like my own expectations, because I was a straight A student, I'm still, it, it like makes me a little twitchy, but he does great, great in everything else. He just struggles with reading, which is fine. At least he tries and he's not doing bad. He's like a, a B student. It's not like he's failing. I'm just ridiculous. Anyway, um, I was at the award ceremony and a parent to one of the students who, um, who's friends with one of my nephews, she came over and she was like, so how much would it cost for mitts that look like this? And so I gave her a price and she said, okay, sounds good. And I said, so I'll just send them home with your daughter when I'm finished with them because it's a student. She said, yep, and she'll get me the money. So I'll be making some mitts. It shouldn't take me more than a few days if I actually work on it. Um, it's just the very beginning and it's black yarn, so you probably can't tell. Well, maybe, maybe you can tell this is crocodile stitch going on. So she said she wanted crocodile stitch mittens. Well, what she said was she wanted dragon mittens. And I had to like figure out what that meant. So I'm doing crocodile stitch and I'm using Red Heart Super Saver in black. And she said she wanted black and purple. And I have this Knit Picks, I think it's Bravo Worsted, the 100% acrylic. And it's purple ish but I don't know if I feel like this is purple enough so I'm gonna go through my stash and see if I have like a really purple purple or I might just swing by the store and grab a skein of red heart purple because I feel like this is too red especially when it's like next to the burgundy it doesn't look purple enough it looks more red so or maybe like pink so anyway, these are the beginnings, the very beginnings of Crocodile Stitch Mitts. My plan is to stripe the colors up the scales, and um, and she wants them kind of long. It, she's much shorter than I am, so she wanted like up to here, which I feel is like one scale repeat shorter than where it is on my arm, and her hands are much smaller than mine because I have giant hands. My hands are huge. My hands are like man size hands. Like my kid's dad, he's 6'2". My hands are the same size as his. His hands are just a little bit wider. But my fingers are just as long and my hands are just as long. Yeah, I have really big hands. So her hands only come up to here on my hand. I know because I had to measure her hands to make sure I wasn't going to make something ridiculously huge for her because I know I have big hands. Anyway, this is most likely going to be a finished object that shows up in picture form next week and hopefully I will have, I'll definitely have the sock head hat done, but hopefully I'll have at least one of the other two projects finished since it will either be at the very end of February or the very beginning of March, the next time I see you. Um, oh, I wanted to talk about, so part of the reason why um, some of these projects are not much further than they were last week, I mean, I did do a lot of knitting, right? In the 10 days, I finished a lot of things. I made really good progress on a lot of stuff in the past 10 days. However, a fair portion of my creative time every day has been sucked up by a new obsession of mine, which is making affirmation cards. I saw my best friend last week on Monday, and she gave me my Christmas present. And well, it was part of my Christmas present. She's also getting me drying racks for drying laundry so that I have actual places to dry my socks and stuff. Um, and also I really, really wanted them. So that's what I asked for for Christmas. She really, really wanted some big fluffy blankets. 
So that's what she's getting for Christmas. Um, not knit or crochet. I'm sure I'm making her a knit blanket right now. Um, but that's not in particular what she was asking for. Speaking of her knitted blanket, because we're tangential, um, I finished a block on her blanket square. It's 100 squares. It's 10 by 10. And I am going to make four 100 square blocks and then figure out if I want to make, I'm either going to make additional 100 square blocks to make it an actual blanket or I'm going to work out from those 100 squares to make them bigger blocks like 240 squares or something to make the blanket. I don't know but I finished one one whole, I squared off 100 squares. So I'm going to start on the next 100 squares in the next week or something. Affirmation cards. Let's get back to that topic. So what she gave me was a deck of 50 cards that had quotes or um, like actual famous quotes or just little reminders. One just says breathe, inhale, exhale. I really like that one. Um, and then there are, there are several that are really, really great, but she made them using index cards and washi tape and um, uncolored pages in her grown-up coloring books because she, she and I actually talked about it after I got the deck of cards. And I was like, I have so many coloring books that I'm not actually coloring in because I want to color, but I don't make time to color because knitting or, and my coloring books, I don't have a space where I can just leave them sitting out. If I had, um, if my desk was not in the common area and I could just leave the page open and have my colored pencils or my pens or my markers, whichever medium I choose to color in that day, if I could just have it sitting so that I could just sit down, color for a few minutes, get up and leave it, that would be fine. But that's not the reality of my life right now. When I started getting adult coloring books, that was the reality. I had my own craft room. My desk was my own. I could just leave things, but that's not what it is right now. So I have these beautiful coloring books that are just sitting there, not being used, and I feel guilt about it. I don't want to get rid of them because I still want them. They still bring me joy. I still would like to color someday. However, um, some of the coloring books, like the, the ones that I got at the Target, the Target, you know, cheap area, I have three of those, um, and they're geometric and mandala shapes. They're beautiful. I don't feel particularly attached to them in the way that I don't want to cut up the coloring book, so I've been using those for the backs of the cards. And then I have a huge collection of washi tape. I love washi tape. I use it in my journal. I use it when I write letters. Um, P.S. Inkorimo is going great. I've been doing, I'm five days behind now. I was four days behind, but that's so much better than I did last year. And I just have to actually sit down and write out the letters or note cards. I have gone through my list of everybody who has sent me their address. Um, so now I just, there's, there's a place where I can go and like find addresses, um, for people specifically participating in Inco Rimo. So I'm going to start doing that. I was a little resistant to, to start that, which is why I'm so behind, but I'm just going to go do that and knock out a bunch of letters. Um, if you would like me to send you a postcard or letter or something, um, PM me your address and I will totally do that. I love writing letters to people or notes or whatever. And um, you don't have to write me back. If you want to write me back, that's awesome. I love receiving letters and stuff, but I don't have a problem just sending you something. So if you want that, PM me on Ravelry or Instagram, or if you are thinking about becoming a Patreon um, subscriber, I guess, is, what, is that what they're called? A Patreon patron? If you're thinking about that, there I have three different tiers. There's a $1, a 
a five dollar and i think it's fifteen dollars a month um and if you do the five or fifteen dollar i have added a new reward where i will send you a for the five dollar and the fifteen um a postcard every month that i make because i'm obsessed with it now um I've always really, really liked paper crafting. It's something that I did with my grandma. We did a whole bunch of stuff. I just, uh, I don't know. I got out of the habit of doing it, but now I'm obsessed with doing it again. Um, anyway, if you do a $15, I think I'm going to change the 15 to 10. I'm going to change the 15 to 10 because yeah, I'm just going to. Um, if you do the $10, It'll be 10 by the time you see this. If you do the $10 tier, then, or it'll be, you know, $10 or more, whatever. Um, you can choose to have me send you a postcard or, so it'll be a postcard that I like write on the back of. So you get a pretty front, but then my handwriting on the back. Or you can opt to have a affirmation card, which will come with a note that I write, but not on the card. So the card will just be, um, a patterned back and an affirmation on the front. So yes, those are options in Patreon. And I just really, really, really love making the affirmation cards. I've always been obsessed with quotes. I have a lot of books of quotes. I write quotes in my journal all the time from things. I love quotes. So the affirmation cards are just a really fun way to have the quotes be present and then can shuffle through the deck of cards and look through them and pull one out just to read it every once in a while. So yeah, that is, that's what I've been obsessed with lately in, you know, not the knitting and crocheting part of my life. Oh, I also have been spinning a fair bit um, I forgot to bring my carnival bears up, but you guys, it is finally feeling like finishing that first four ounces is going to be an attainable goal <laughs> because I have been watching um, Kara of Boho Berry. She's doing a month-long plan with me in her bullet journal and digital journal, and they are really short videos. I think the longest one was the first one and it was 22 minutes because she was discussing what the, giving an intro basically, and also showing what she was doing that day. But the rest of them, like one of them was only five minutes, I think. Five, so they're five to 15 minutes. It's just a little tiny sound bite, and I only watch it if I'm spinning. So if I want to watch the episode, which I enjoy watching, um, then I have to spin. And it is much, I, I have made myself spin through longer podcasts, but it's much easier to convince myself to spin on it if it's just for a little, a little podcast. This makes it sound like I'm not enjoying the spin. I am enjoying the spin. I just, I'm not in love with the spin. Not the fiber's fault, not the, the fiber's beautiful, my spindle is beautiful. It's just been on the spindle for five years now. So I like, I feel guilty that it's not done and the guilt makes me not want to work on it because if I work on it, then I acknowledge that I have this thing that has, um, this thing that I've been working on for five years that's not done yet. And it's just, it's a vicious, anxious spiral. So that's why it's not getting worked on. But if I sort of gamify it, for a while I was spinning on it while I was watching Instagram stories. But then that became a thing I couldn't do because too many people were posting text posts. So I would have to hold down the screen so that they wouldn't flash away. So I couldn't spin. So, or it wasn't conducive to spinning. So, I'm probably not going to finish the fiber this month. I don't think that's realistic. I have probably 
18 inches of the braid left to spin. Um, but it is only 18 inches left of the braid. It's getting so close and hopefully I'll be able to finish it in March. It's, I'm not even talking about plying. It's just finishing the single is all I have to do. And I'm getting so, so close. Whew, that was a lot of rambling. You're welcome. <laughs> I hope you made something fantastic with your six and string. Come hang out with me in the comments. Let me know what you thought, what you're working on. Tell me your opinions on a knit along for that shawl. Um, or if you have any specific questions about the shawl, pop them down below. Uh, I would love to hear about what you worked on while you were listening, whether it was knitting or not. Um, and uh, I would love for you to talk about anything below. I love chatting with you guys. If you are feeling it, head over to Patreon, check that out, um, and maybe become a patron. I really, really, really appreciate my patrons. So for those of you who are, thank you so, so much. I will see you next week. Bye.